So I want to talk about what it would take to linearize around a steady state and try to come up with a nice linear expression. Now often we find linear expressions and linear differential equations just sort of come out of nowhere and it looks very nice and we're good, right? Um, the problem is, is that the process and the transformation of taking what is a real system and a real world system and making it a linear system takes some effort. And we have, and they're sort of like, well, when you're faced with these questions, you're always like, well, how do I start? How do I think about it? So this is where we want, want to kind of walk through and begin this. So I want to use this as an example by just taking a very simple circuit, um, simple by at least circuit designer standards. Uh, there are two transistors in here. I use resistor circuits, to, resistor elements and BJTs to kind of make this more widely uh, understandable although uh, most more people may um, connect with that. Um, although, in general, when you're doing a lot of IC design, you're usually not doing BJTs, you're usually using MOSFETs, but let's start here. And what we have for the BJTs, I just want to keep this very, very simple. Those who haven't thought about BJTs in a while, uh, you want to start off by assuming that beta is infinite, which means you have no base current. Yay! Um, I'm also going to really then only look at one current going through here, going from the collector to emitter, and that current is going to be related to whatever is an exponential the base to emitter voltage. The key parameters in here are going to be IS, which is basically your, it's just sort of your, is a sort of a, a parameter um, and can be calculated or experimentally measured. MUT, which is basically the thermal voltage. This one's kind of, you know, not going to move much unless you're changing the temperature in the room. So that's pretty, this is a known constant. This is going to be one parameter based on the device. Good enough. Um, and what you end up getting is two, for those who are curious, you have a high gain common source amplifier. You have a, a, a source follower or emitter follower amplifier here. Two capacitors. This means that I'm going to likely have two state variables. Because when we talk about current integrating onto a capacitor, that's going to create integration. That's going to create some things. In fact, you'll see as when we start to write the equations immediately, we start off with CdB2dt equals and CdB out dt equals, which puts you pretty much in a canonical form for talking about creating a set of differential equations. And you're like, this works. Okay, that makes sense. And so basically the transistors give me a nonlinear element that asks how am I going to approach this. I have resistors that are here. This one's basically acting as a load. It doesn't do a whole lot. This one actually acts as a load that helps set the gain. And then this, these two R's are creating a feedback around the amplifier, um, or a feedback around the system. So I get a feedback from output back into the middle node. If you look closely, you're thinking that is this basically like negative feedback around an amplifier, around an op amp. And, and to a sense, this is very similar. It's the same idea. And then you can see, well, where do the three equations come up? Well, this is the resistor on V2, and there's your transistor element. Here's the transistor here, and then here is the resulting resistance. And then here is the element related to that resistive feedback. So one of the first things right off the bat is writing down KCL typically going into capacitors, very typical. And then once you're done with that sort of sort of simplifying things as best you can to start with, uh, which may or may not be possible because you, you know, it may or may not be obvious where to go with this. So sometimes we can, we can jump through steps and kind of not jumping through too much yet. The first thing is you have to figure out is where is the steady state? The steady state, of course, is when the derivatives are zero, which means nothing's moving. That's what we mean by steady state. So in this case, steady state would then be when these two equations are equal. And you'd solve that and you'd get a steady state. Great, we don't need to do that right now. Just know that that's how what you would do. You could solve it in your favorite means for your particular problem. But here's the thing, that once I have the steady state, I want to not only, I want to move everything around that point. I want to be expanding around that particular solution. Well, to expand around that solution means I need to take that input expand around that point and I'm going to have some change in it. Same thing for the output, same for V2, same for Vn, and I will take this and then I can start to 
cool that together, and then group terms. And so now I'm going to have things that are going to be, here's a bias term, and you'll often think about things that say, here's a bias, this is like its starting value, but I'm going to swing around it, and I'm going to look for things around that. Well, here's where that might begin, and now I start to pull things, I can start to move things around. RC, typical time constant, so I'm trying to move in that direction. Because um, eventually I think, like, hey, I want to eventually normalize stuff out, so let me see if I can do that. Same sort of thing here for VL. But notice what happens with the nonlinearities here. I've got 1 minus the change in V2 over what is a constant bias point here. And I have something else here, which is then just the remaining change of the exponential. Same sort of thing in the next term. And part of what I'm doing is some interesting things where I can actually rename sort of a voltage over R as an interesting sort of product of two terms. And this allows me to kind of renormalize some things and kind of group some terms. The next thing I need to do is I need to linearize. So I'm going to want to linearize this whole process. Well, linearize here pretty much means takes the exponentials and it's 1 plus x plus something else. And that allows me to do it. Now, for those who may have done more advanced circuits, you might have remembered this comes from what people talk about, like uh, small signal models and so forth. And this all works, but understand that when you say I'm going to get rid of the DC term and I'm going to linear and take the linearized model, there's something very much implied in that. And usually people miss a lot of details by not realizing that happens. The classic case is you build a circuit where it has a power supply of ground and VDD, and somebody just assumes blithely, I'll just put an input that's you know plus or minus you know 100 millivolts into the input, and realizing that the chip won't work for half of that phase, because that's not really where things are. So it's very important detail. So once you've linearized, now we have linear <coughs> equations. The last part then is to normalize things so that way you've removed a lot of the sort of voltage and current things. So this is typically what's going to happen when you're handing something. And normalization is very important because it'll tell you kind of where you're sitting. So it'll typically say, okay, they will have a particular voltage and it's going to be over some parameter. Well, I want to normalize, you know, so that it's volts over volts and now it's got no units. Um, there's maybe a term which is gain. This is A sub B, which is gain because there is actually a gain that happens from sort of, say, from input through to V2, if I'm looking at it that way. And that might be a way to approach this problem. Um, there's the X's. There's also two time constants. I probably should have picked one and a parameter, but you can do different things with this. But when it's all done, notice I get a very nice set of normalized differential equations. And we're good. Sometimes people will normalize the timeout as well because, well, that's just messy, right? And we can then just have some parameter and push through. Sometimes that works very, very well, and so it will kind of depend on the problem. But the thing to realize is that there is a clear process, and that even though there's some intuition that people get to know how to do this process carefully and effectively and probably to, to an optimum, with practice, this is a very straightforward process particularly for circuits or pick your other favorite phenomenological system that you're trying to model, control, or work with, and then build, and then be able to build your models and then be able to build your linearization, which is where much of your stability will come from.